they were at nine life facing lethal in the air on turn four. <laughs> oh my god, I love this. Look at this. It's so cool. Hello YouTube, all welcome to Fine Day, and today we are going to have a look at Grease Fine Okiba boss in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by pitching a big mean vehicle onto the graveyard on turn 1 or 2, playing Grease Fang on turn 3, and just bringing it in with haste. Okay, so uh, Okiba, uh, well, Grease Fang Okiba boss says at the beginning of combat on your turn, return target vehicle from your graveyard to the battlefield, it gains haste, and then you return it to its owner's hand at the beginning of your next end step. So the big idea is, for example, we can play something like a seasoned hollow blade on turn two. Uh, in their end step, we tap the hollow blade, discard. Um, for ex the dream would be Parhelion two, and then on turn three we play Grease Fang, uh, get Parhelion out, crew Parhelion with Grease Fang, and uh, just swing it with a five five, make two four four attacking angels in the meantime, and yeah, that is basically the dream here. So, in the rest of the deck, um, to go around this discard theme, right, because we need to have our discard outlets, um, it is basically an Ors of Madness shell that we're looking at here. We have uh, Madness, like, or disc self-discard payoffs, like Dying to Surf in our deck. Uh, we can discard our hand consistently. We have a bunch of discard outlets. We have like cards like Zombie Infestation. Even just something like a Crypt Breaker can help us discard cards. Uh, we have Madness cards as well, uh, because these like to be discarded. Then Madness says if this gets discarded, we can cast it instead, basically. And uh, that is the basic idea behind this deck. Uh, we also have some real uh, tech in here with uh, Oswald Fiddlebender. Um, because Grease Fang's ability uh, it puts them into the hand at the beginning of the end step. So we still have a main phase while the um, artifact is around in play. We can sacrifice it and just get a bigger meaner thing permanently into play with Oswald. And even just one activation is extremely brutal. And you notice that my curve goes through basically from 2 to uh, 8, right? So I'm basically always guaranteed to have something, like I have a 5 drop, sure, I always get a Demolition Stomper. I have a Demolition Stomper, I get a Thundersteel Colossus. I have a Thundersteel Colossus, I get a Parhelion, right? And that is just amazing. Um, like, this is extremely, extremely brutal. One thing um, to note here, there are only two vehicles that Grease Fang cannot crew on his own. And uh, these are Demolition Stomper with crew 5, uh, that has 10 power though, and is uh, decently hard to block. And Colossal Plow, uh, th this card can crew for 6, but when it attacks we add t triple white uh, at the, um, basically for our main phase 2 and gain 3 life. So those cards I'm going to um, like have an eye out for uh, to see how they perform. Uh, my thinking is if I discard Colossal Plow to something like a Crypt Breaker, I, I actually have uh, the, this power in play. Right. Uh, if I just have a fleeting spirit or a season hollow blade to discard that uh, colossal plow, this also works. So uh, it shouldn't be too bad, honestly. Like there are some lines where this cannot be crewed on turn three with the grease fang, but overall, I think I should be fine here. Um, we also just have like good value cards. Rankle Mass of Pranks is especially disgusting because the artifact creature stays around, right? And then instead of putting it into our hand, we just sacrifice it with Rankle and then it's ready to just be reanimated for next turn in our graveyard. So that is pretty, pretty great. Um, overall, uh, oh, uh, one, one additional thing. Um, Thoughtseize and Divest. Uh, you can you can point these at yourself to discard your own cards, right? Um, so that is really important to know and is um, a viable line of play actually. 
yeah, overall, uh, I I expect a lot of things from this deck. Um, it is like I, I tested this a few games, obviously, uh, to make sure I'm just not serving you like bullshit here. And I had way too much fun with this. I just wanted to keep playing. So <laughs> let's see how my actual games here for you on YouTube perform. Um, if you do like what you see, uh, sub consider subscribing to the channel and um, yeah, let, let's let's just do this. Let's go. We are ready to play against Angrath, and this commander is usually playing Rats. And against Rats, Season Hollow Blade is pretty strong. Uh, just block the Rats. The thing is, when they uh, when the opponent gets Menace, that can be quite annoying. Maybe I want to wall more for discard outlet plus um, uh, plus vehicle. I'm not sure. I think I will try to mulligan a bit more aggressively here. Uh, yeah, this actually works. Okay. Okay, uh, let's do... Let's see what's going on there. Okay, it's red colonies. Okay, sure, sure. I could have thought seized myself to play the Oswald. Um to activate it later, but now I'm basically locked in into this play, where I discard cards. Do I need another land here? I guess I don't, right? I guess I don't? Hmm, very interesting, very interesting. Because I want the selfless saver just as a potential blocker for these rats. Um, I guess Crawling Barons will never be relevant in this game, so I'd rather have the White Source. Uh, sure, let's try it. I think I won't need a fourth land for some time here. Mm hmm they discarded a red, exactly what we wanted to see. Neat. Another red, as expected. But now the reds are slowly going down. Uh, Grease Fang is doing his thing. Kill this red. And then crew. Kill another red. Oh my god. Look at this. And we just like completely deprived them out of resources. Holy moly, what a turn. <laughs> GG. We are ready to play against Akiri Line Slinger. And uh, let's see. Big artifact? Sure. We can discard it, I guess. Um, let's try something more aggressive. Oh! Yo, we're doing it! We're on the play. Holy moly. Let's go! Gotta keep this somehow fam family friendly, right? Um. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, this is the dream. We have it. Boys and girl, because I think there is only one girl watching. Um, uh, at least judging from the statistics on this channel. We are doing it. I'm just going to dump these big things. Oh no. It's like... Ah. Oh no, I, I can only discard once, right? Um, but still. Holy moly. Here, Perhelion. That is a bit tougher to deal with. Right? Um, yeah, SRAM, that's cute. Uh, also, well, uh, worthy to note here, I excluded SRAM from this list because I'm actually not casting my artifacts whatsoever. Okay, anyways, Grease Fang, Okiba Boss, on turn 3, we reanimate Parhelion 2 with haste. We swing in. Opponent is currently at 25 life, huh? I wonder. They might go lower. They are at 9 life, facing lethal in the air on turn 4. <laughs> oh my god, I love this. Look at this. It's so cool. Oh my god. Oh my god. We did the thing. We did the thing, YouTube. Yeah, sure, lightning helix away. Um... Yep, I got my value. This board is 
basically unbeatable for them. Yep, yep, yep. And I am going to play the selfless samurai here and the bankbuster. So we have some insurance against board wipes. So if they try to board wipe here, I can give one of these ancients indestructible. I have the bank buster. Yeah, this is this is intense. This is really something. Yeah, okay, pro tip, Grease Fang, you kind of want to mold a bit more aggressively because you're effectively a combo deck, right? Kind of depends what uh, deck you're facing, though. Like, if I... Like, Akiri is not very interactive, usually. They follow a linear, linear game plan by themselves. And um, against control, you want to have a better hand against control, and you don't need to go all in, or you don't want to go all in, because it's likely not going to work. Anyways, what a game, GG. We are ready to play against Feather the Redeemed. And... Um, as I said, previous game. Let's try to mulligan a bit more aggressively. Uh, that is... Swords to Plowshares, Mummy, um, Oswald doing his thing. I think I'm going to try a bit of a different curve here for sure. It's going to be interesting. I'm, my plan is currently turn to Oswald, turn 3 Bankbuster, pot that up into a 3-drop. Now we have a bank bust in the graveyard. No! You don't have a Swords to Plower Chairs. You're not allowed to do... No! No. 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 Hi, this is how the cookie crumbles. Now I'm in trouble, right? Oh, man. I'm just going to play Grease Fang here. Man, that's, that would have been such a cool curve. Uh, the problem is that they have the Mox Amber as well to protect the Feather. Um, but maybe... Maybe... They just don't have that, right? You know what? I'm going to do the following. Miyazim Mummy. Discarding Bankbuster. Yes. Now, bank past the cruise for three, right? Yeah, so I gotta. Mm hmm. Uh, crew. Swing in. And. If they buff Feather here to block the bank buster. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're smart. I'm still just doing this. Um, but they probably have a protection spell up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they played this pretty well. Oh, the, the the God's Willing doesn't protect from colorless. I see, I see. They get to scry. I mean, they got to scry anyways. Okay, this has been a way more interactive game than I anticipated. Um, so, let's see where this game is going. Mm -hmm. The Kapal Initiate is basically the same as playing a Bankbuster. Um... Interesting, interesting. Oh, Arclight Phoenix is a spicy tech, though. Hmm. We are currently getting rolled, as they say. Um, maybe I'm supposed to activate uh, the Abandoned Mire here? Honestly, that doesn't seem half bad. You know what? I'm going to mill a vehicle right now. Are you ready, guys? I'm ready for it. I'm so ready for it. Mm, nope. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. But fear not, YouTube. We are. In the game, I guess? I mean, we can win by just killing them, and it currently doesn't seem like. They get to scry one each turn, and they get to put two counters uh, each turn cycle onto this feather. We get to chump the feather once, uh, because uh, while protection just makes it unblockable against colored cards, I have the Blink Moth Nexus to chump it once, once we need to do so. Okay, we know what is in their hand. And, um... Yeah, they get to scry too. They're just aggressively scrying for something here. Bottom? Oh, top. 
No, no, not not the top. Don't do the top opponent. Oh, they get back the arc left wing as well. This play as well. Mm, pretty good. Okay, I need to hold up the blink moth next open. So I'm going to die otherwise. Mm hmm. I kind of want this cabal initiate in play. Yeah. Just a free uh, discard outlet. Carrier. And move to attacks. Does this crew for two? Oh, this crew's for two. That's amazing. Yep, Grease Fang. Uh, oh no, that also just crews itself, right? That's the whole point of the card. Uh, yeah. I'm still doing the good initiate just to be cool. Mm hmm. This is actually a race. Because they're going to five. I have the Blink Moth Nexus to block here. Um, and it is colorless. So, yeah. Pretty great. Again, I am uh, dead on board next turn. But. Um, let's see what they're doing. Do they. Even Trample doesn't save them. Uh, because I just get. Oh no, if, the, if it's instant speed trample. Does this work? Mm. Oh, who, yeah. Even trample doesn't save them if it's sorcery speed. This is instant speed, right? Yeah, so they messed up. They should have just gave trample to whatever um, the blink moth is blocking. Because now I get to block the Phoenix, and the Trample is on the wrong card. And we survive, and they surrender. GG, they didn't see the Blink Moth. Uh, wow, what an <laughs> intense game. We are ready to play against Halana and Elena, partners, and... Um, yeah, this does have white. I kind of want another white source. Um... We do have the Baleful Mastery for their commander though, and I think that is extremely important in order to not die. So, let's try to hit the white. <clears throat> going to discard Bankbuster, obviously, and if that doesn't work out, I'm going to discard Kitchen Finks on turn uh, 3. Yep. Pahelion hitting the graveyard. Technically, I should do this in their end step. But it will. Are we doing the Pahelion thing again? Like, ju just asking. Just just asking for a friend, basically, right? Are we going to get the turn 3 Pahelion again? Okay. Okay, our discard outlet is officially gone. Um, yeah, we didn't get to do the turn 3 Pahelion again. Um... I feel like with what they currently have on board, Alana and Elena, one activation is probably not scary enough that I care. And I don't want them to draw the card. <clears throat> mm hmm. Because th this, this current board is fine, right? Uh. Sure. Play this untapped. And. We could play the idol. We could play the idol. But. Yeah. I don't want them to draw the card. So, let's wait on this. Uh, oh, this is last known information, right? I sh needed to do this earlier. Mm hmm. The power was 2 on this ability. Mm, yeah, that was kind of a mistake. I thought I had an opportunity to do something before that, but I didn't. Uh, so, that was a bad play on my part. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's see, discard something. Uh, Doomblade. Works, I guess. Uh, we can discard the Guardian Idol. Guess I don't need that. No text. We start chomping the Woodland Mystic, probably. Shifting Ceratops. Oh, it's getting ugly. 
put counters on that, yeah. Jump. Would like Mystic, I guess. Yep. Alright, let's see. Can we come back from this? Probably not. We don't run board wipes really. Yeah. I mean, can still do some stuff here. It's just probably not enough. Wait, maybe. Maybe. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's Perhelion time, right? So... Yeah. So we do the Perhelion. Um, crew here. We swing in. Is crew until end of turn? It's until end of turn, not beginning of the next end step, right? So I can't, like... I mean... Nah. Nah, I, I can't crew, like, in response to the trigger to return to hand, I can't crew Bankbuster and then it's crewed th throughout their turn. But, um... Hold on. I... I think we can win this still. Like, we're just overwhelming them. Because the Doom Blade that we got, uh... Yeah, we, we, we can discard the Bahedian next turn with the Fleeting Spirit. We can... Like, they are going to put a counter on the Ceratops, just make it huge and massive, right? That is their plan. Like, just a huge Ceratops. Oh no, okay, okay, I respect that. I'm going to double block with my angels here. Like this. And Doomblade, the Ceratops. If they have Hexproof, all power to them. Mm hmm. They're just sinking mana into that. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're winning this game. It's the power of the Barillion. Yep. Um. What can I say, guys? Oh, they're burning down the house. So good thing we didn't actually uh, crew the bank buster there. Oh, was it a good thing? Now we can't hasten with the bank buster. Sure. Do we get to. Wait, one, two. <gasps> Let's go! Discard by Helion! Boom! And Grease Fang. Pahelion again. Yup. And the second Pahelion is coming. The combat potential here is insane. <laughs> GG! We are ready to play against Nifemizu Parun. And full control ahead basically uh, yeah our mana base is biting us a little bit for sure like the blink moth nexus is there to crew things like that's why i have a lot of man lands maybe i want to cut this for colored land um anyways this is a mulligan Ooh, this is an interesting one this is a hand that plays without grease fang like just getting one land here and then just like Mardo Outrider, Rotting Register, or just big dumb things to beat down Niv. Um, I think I will play it. I think uh, it is worth exploring this. And start on Thought Seizing You. I just need any land honestly. Uh, memory Lapse versus Fading Hope. Uh, they do not have Bloom. I'm going to gamble and take the reunion. Mm-hmm. Oh, there is our white source. Pretty neat. Now we just do Regisaur. Ah, they top deck the blue. God damn it. Um I'm starting on the rotting Regisaur because this is an additional cost and if they like counter or bounce it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Man, they top deck top the blue back to back, but what can you do, right? Um, do I go with the Bowman Bazaar Barge, or do I do something else? 
completely. I think... So if they bounce him, I end up on the register. I don't get to bin the card. And now I actually want to discard this. So if they get rid of the Mardu Outrider here, I can go with Grease Fang next turn, reanimating Boma Bazaar Barge, drawing a card. Maybe... Um... Maybe doing... Uh, the... Maybe doing the Registrar instead of Grease Fang was the plan there. Oh, that is the plan next turn anyways. Oh, uh, let's just chalk this in. No reason not to. Uh, pretty... Can't think of. Um, sure. Grease Fang, they're going to bounce this, right? And then just bomb it Bizarre Barge, sure. Sure, sure. Um, it's just what it is. Can't play around it. You have to bounce this now. Otherwise... Oh, they're bouncing the Outrider. I think that's a mistake. Oh, no! Excellent play. I love those plays. I like it. Good play, opponent. Um, yeah, our life total doesn't matter. So, like, shocking. It's like, basically... I don't care. Uh, if they... They just top decked their mana for Niv on Curve. Which is... It's pretty impressive, right? They're just like, ah, oh, I'm, uh, I'm on full red. Sure, I, 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 I don't care. Um, yeah, I'm going to play the biggest, baddest thing here. Um, they're going to play their Niv, trying to kill me. Now, maybe shocking this Godless Shrine in wasn't the best choice, but it's what it is. Oh no. Faithless looting? Oh no, they're just trying to dig for their uh, curiosity, right? Oh man, they're playing this well. The, the, for sure they're playing this well, but um, I don't like it. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, I'm going to get this Grease Fang countered. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure, put it into the command zone. What's in my graveyard? Raven. If I discard this... I discard the Awakening anyways. It's weird. I'm just playing the body here. Sure, bring this back, but I'm going to discard it to the Regisaur. Whatever. I just want, like... Sticks on the board here. Um, that's all I want. So I'm going to be empty handed, but if they still don't play Niv, yeah, okay, they play Niv. Um, I assume they get the curiosity here because they draw so many cards. Nope, they don't. Um, just Grease Fang force them to have a counter spell. If they have it, they have it, but. Um, Looks that they don't. That is pretty great. Just go for full damage here. Um, that's what I want. Not going to play this land. I'm going to discard it to the Regisaur. Yeah, play you. And now I'm... They go to one here, but I think going to one is fine. I think they should just... Yeah. Man. If this, like, any of these were a shock land, that would have been great. Uh, do I... We have two legendaries out? No. So this is actually just a land drop. Currently thinking, um, I probably play this as a land because I'm going to discard one of these um, uh, vehicles anyways, right? Okay, they're cycling neutralize. Two mana, that is pretty good. Uh, but they're currently dead on board. Um, but I think I'm dead on board as well. Let's see if this two damage from the... Like, that's actually interesting, right? If this two damage from the Godless Shrine mattered. That is a great start for us uh, that they started on, uh, like, trying to kill the Registaur here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Because that also gets rid of uh, the Bowman Bazaar Barge. Uh, well... Not get rid of, but you know, makes it so it doesn't 
get pitched to the graveyard, which is pretty important. I do have a sneaky Cape of the Frost Drag activation, however. Oh no, they're going face suddenly? Uh, yeah. I assume they have a draw five here. Yeah. Okay, the it it did not matter whatsoever here. Um if I shocked this in. That was a really clutch game. I'm I'm not sure did I uh I guess if I I think I had an opportunity of playing Regisaur over Mardu Outrider earlier. And there's where I missed damage, so I could have done that. Um But could I map at that point, could I map out this so precisely that, you know, was the Mardu outright that at that point actually the worst player or the better player, right? Like, I, I have to value my, my plays not in a what-if scenario, but, like, what was the best play given the current um, information. Anyways, um, I'm going to surrender here and uh, move on to the next game. That was amazing. GG. We are done with the game, so I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And yeah, uh, apparently there is no next game. There's just me babbling some stuff in the end of the video. Uh, anyways, Greasefang Okiba boss. Uh, somebody at this, like when the set was released, was like, Greasefang is the coolest commander ever. And I was like, oh, dude, Greasefang is so trash. Uh, I stand corrected. Greasefang is pretty, pretty darn cool. So, um, this deck, oh my, I, I did not expect the greatness that uh, came out of these games. Like, if you're just a person that just, like, watches um, the start and then the end for the budget, uh, watch some of these games. The absolute insanity um, was about to happen. Anyways, uh, if you want to build this deck on a budget, what can you cut? What do you need? And... Sadly, I have to tell you, this is again one of those critical mass decks where you really need at least some of the pieces that are pretty niche just to make it work, right? And um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of tricky uh, because uh, okay, first and foremost, what can you actually cut? Um, and it's criminal to say this, but I think if you if you just care about making this specific deck work, you need so many of the like niche cards that I would not recommend you to craft usually um, over the staples that you actually just start cutting staples. So what do I mean by that? So Dark Ritual can do some cool stuff in this deck, but you probably don't need it. So it's the Plowshares. You, we, we have a bunch of... Um, good uh, two mana removal it is one mana removal so don't get me wrong this is still insanely insanely strong but uh, you can replace this with an uncommon black removal spell same with fateful absence same with baleful mastery right so those things you can replace inquisition of Kozlik you can maybe replace um but now we uh, and honestly the the madness cards uh like are okay but you probably don't need them as well right something like a necrogoyf probably don't need keto archive although that one game it just straight up won right um right you don't need uh the necrogoyf as well or the asylum visitor right um now we get into the really cool stuff right so crypt breaker uh you basically want all the discard outlets that discard you on turn one or two yes even thought sees you should craft this anyways right but thought seizes uh, inquisition doesn't discard like the, all the most of these vehicles anyways right but thought seizes uh you want uh yeah that's basically the only and then the crypt breaker everything uh like every other discard outlet is <laughs> uncommon so that is pretty cool Right, you saw that just beat down with Regisor and Mother Outrider is pretty pretty potent. Although the opponent won that game on one life, um, and you want the vehicles, like you can cut some of them, like one or two, and just play like beat stick vehicles instead. But you really really want the vehicles. Um, there is no way around it. This like if you just put a like. 4-4 four, four vehicle that's just a stat stick into play, that, that is not very impressive. You want your vehicles to do other things. So check a mag, basically just pinging something, pretty great. A weatherlight giving you potential card advantage. Um, galleon, flipping, like this thing is a beast if it's flipped, like 
just the conquerors foretold draw a card discard each turn that is massive right uh, and then you mean you saw how the sky sovereign and perhelion what they can do you you absolutely want those kinds of cards in your deck um uh, again you probably don't need dying to surf uh, you don't need curse of science like all the you have to think of it this way does the card um directly put a uh put a vehicle into the graveyard and if the answer is no then you probably don't need it well unless it's a set vehicle right because you also need the vehicles to put them into the graveyard uh the lands especially i maybe you're doing yourself a favor in cutting the blink moth next i think still crawling barons and mobilized district are pretty good because um they have enough power to accrue these powerful um powerful vehicles on their own and then just be a nuisance to control decks right that that is their uh, uh, thing here if we play against a really grindy to uh, control deck like teferi um we can't just crew these things over and over and over like if one of them sticks on the battlefield the opponent is really in trouble um yeah but overall uh, deck is not too budget you need a lot of cards that you basically do not play in any other deck whatsoever that is a big big minus in my book right you usually want decks that just function with staples this is basically the opposite this is just functioning without staples um yeah but overall it is a pretty pretty fun deck um and man do you have some turns in this deck man oh man oh man Hope you enjoyed today's video um, and yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I will catch you tomorrow.